Here's a quick intro to using automation and envelopes and effects in Reaper. So I have a new session here. Uh, I've imported one drum loop. I'm going to turn the volume down on it a little bit. So what's automation? Well, automation is a way to have Reaper automatically change values over time. So if I push this trim button over here, I get a little window that says envelopes. And for free with every track, I get these basic envelopes that control volume and pan and width, and then the pre-effects version of all of those things, and then mute. So let's do volume, because that'll be easy to hear. And if I choose one of those, then I actually get a whole new track underneath. And you can think of this line as kind of a graph showing volume over time. So if I hold down Shift and click, I can make points and I can move the points around. And then when I play back, volume will now be following this little graph that I made. OK, so that's one way to write automation. Uh, with any point, I can select it by clicking it, and then I have the option of right-clicking, and I can change the shape of that point. So I can have uh, curves that maybe have a fast ending to them, or I can have a slow ending, or a square, lots of different kinds of shapes. I can also delete the point. I can select points by right-clicking and drawing a rectangle around them. I can create new points. I can also do Command a, select all the points and delete all the points at once. Uh, I can also, if I have some shapes here, if I do Command A, I can move all of these points around together. And that same goes for selecting subsets of points. I can select just a few points and then move them as a group. Speaking about moving automation, uh, there's two modes with automation here. So this button up here controls whether or not automation moves with items or not. If it's off and I move items, and notice I'm in ripple editing mode here, so all of these items are moving in one clump, the automation stays where it is. If I turn this button on, the automation moves with the items. So that's a very important feature to remember. There's another way to draw automation, and that's by holding down Command, and I get a little pencil here, and I can draw freehand my own shape. So if I back up and press play, great. So that's another way to control automation. And I notice these little clip meters here. I actually did clip because I was taking a pretty loud sample and already making it louder. So I went over and I'd have to try and avoid that if I was trying to make a real session, make some real music here. Uh, so those are the basic envelopes, but you can also get envelopes for effects. So notice, if I go to the mixer window here, there are all these empty slots. And if I push one of these slots at the top, these are slots are where I can put effects. An effect is just simply a thing that processes the sound over time. So. If I go to the subcategory here of Cocos, that's the company that makes Reaper, uh, I'm going to use their EQ. And I'm going to put this over here and choose a band pass. I'll play a couple seconds of this so you can hear what this effect is doing. So you can hear that it's changing the frequency of the sound. I can move this around and accentuate or cut the low sounds or the high sounds, and I can do sweeps. So that's all well and good, and a lot of the time, if you're doing mixing and mastering, you might just uh, want to take the EQ and leave it in one spot. Um, but if you want to use EQ in a more dynamic way, uh, maybe instead of doing very careful technical EQing, for mixing or mastering if you wanted to use it in an artistic way. Uh, you might want to have this move around a lot in a very wild, kind of obvious, easy to hear way. 
So it would be nice to be able to record a performance of this and have Reaper remember what I did and be able to play it back later. So there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, if I go back to my little window here, notice that now I have all these new envelopes. And I'll have also different modes that I can treat the automation in. So the, uh, there's the automation mode menu here. Trim read is what you're in most of the time. And that is, if there is an envelope, it'll read it and apply those values. There's also a mode called write. So if I push write, suddenly all of these envelopes, uh, all of these parameters are fair game for writing new information. So if I push play and start playing around, notice what happens. There's a very active and wild little session there with the write tool. And notice after I push stop, this goes back to the trim read mode. But notice here, these envelopes are now both checked. They're both visible, and I can see them here. And they're both what's called armed. Uh, so that means that they're ready to be uh, record new values if I go back into write mode. Uh, so for instance, if I go back into write mode, and push play. There, now I just recorded new data. So when I start write mode, the plugin stops reading the automation and lets me write new values. Uh, if I push this, say I wanted to now automate the panning here, but I liked the EQ the way it is, I can take these off of arm mode. I can go back into write mode. And now if I write, because I unchecked arm on these envelopes, these aren't going to be overwritten. Now let's say I want to record some new information for pan over here. And then I can stop. So now I've written new information for pan. If I go and look here, I can see that pan is now visible and it's armed. And I could uncheck that. If I wanted to keep that safe and write more automation with other things later, I could do that. There's another mode called latch. And if I arm these, I can have all of these armed, which means that they're all ready to be written. And instead of, unlike write, it's not going to overwrite with new values. It's going to read them like normal. But if I grab a parameter and hold it steady or move it in a new way, see, here's where I grabbed frequency and I actually changed the values that were being written here. So latch can read automation, but then if you grab it and start moving a parameter around, it'll write the new automation. And as soon as I let go of that parameter, it'll go back to the old values. Latch mode stays in that mode when you stop recording. So if you want to go back to normal Reaper-like trim read mode, you have to choose that explicitly. So those are the common ones. There's latch, write, and trim read. Touch is sort of like latch, except that uh, as soon as you stop moving the parameter, it goes back to the old automation, whereas latch will hang out at a new, at that new value and just keep writing at that new value. Uh, these are now written and memorized. Uh, if I save my session and open it later, I can see them. Uh, if I open my session and I don't see these envelopes, never fear. Um, I can always get them back with this with this uh, menu here. If I push these green buttons, notice what happens if I push, say, the buttons for, well, all of these, they all gray out. And they stop being applied. So my pan isn't moving, my EQ isn't moving. If I just bring pan back, I can hear this envelope, but these ones are disabled. And now I can bring them all back. If I want to hide these envelopes, say I'm done and I don't want them cluttering up my workspace anymore, I can choose this button here, click trim, and I can do hide all. And that hides all the envelopes. 
And then similarly, I can show all the active envelopes. And then I can arm all the active, all the active envelopes or disarm all of them. There's a lot of options there. So now I'm going to choose hide. And notice that even though I can't see them, I can still hear their effects. My EQ is moving, my panning is moving. So all of those things I just did are remembered and they're now part of my session. So using all the different editing styles for envelopes and automation, uh, being able to do it point, point by point or with the pencil tool or by recording performances that you do live, uh, you're able to build up very complex sessions where a lot of things are moving and, and uh, being dynamically controlled. One last note on effects. If I right click over this effect, I get different options. I can bypass the effect, which means it's no longer applied. Uh, I can delete the effect, which simply gets rid of it, and then I can rename it, which can be quite useful. So when I rename it, I get this window that pops up, and instead of re-EQ, I could give this a new name like wild EQ. So now I know that this is the EQ that's moving around a lot. Uh, and similarly with all the other effects that I make, I can actually give them personalized names that will help me remember uh, what they're for.